Just a few doors open and a few others are beaten down in Brookside. Lazy cat, get up! Telly! Come on, get up, eh? Telly! Do you think he wants to become a member? Don't stare over. And if any of that lot are hanging around the school again with the leaflets, you just ignore them. Don't worry, I will. Oh, Mum, can I stay at Chantel's tonight? No, you've got school in the morning. You always let Bess stay out when she's got college. Yeah, well, that's different because Beth's older than you. It's not fair. You let Bess stay at Chris's all the time. Why do you always assume she stays at Chris's? Because she's always there. See ya. Uh, Rachel, have you, um... Have you ever noticed anything, uh, unusual about Chris? Depends what you mean by unusual. Well, I don't know. I mean, um, have you ever noticed anything strange about her? Has Beth ever said anything to you about her? Why should she? It's none of my business. What's none of your business? I'm going to be late. You know something, don't you? About what? About our Beth and that Chris. I promised her I won't say anything. Look, Mum, I'm late. It's, it's all right, Lou. I knew anyway. I'll have to go. OK, I'll see you later. Anyone come out of there this morning? No, it's probably a bit early for them. When are you going to get rid of them? Today. There you are. Thanks. Carl, you don't mind me bringing Josh, do you? It's only one I had to open the shop up this morning. Of course not. This is what us working mums have to do. <laughs> Should get onto you and Pat to open a crash. I don't think it's much for an employee to ask. That's something we'll have to think about. See ya. Bye. How did the test go on Friday? I'm really glad you went. Look, Dee Dee, I don't want you to kick off, but I didn't go. You didn't go? Why not? There's no point. What do you think you're playing at, messing everyone around like this? Look, I didn't want to go, and that's the end of it. Well, this tells me one thing. This tells me he's all Mike's. Why else wouldn't you go? Too scared of finding out the truth? I know the truth. Do you? Well, let me tell you, unless you go for those tests, you'll never really know. I'm knackered. Have you seen my jeans? You can't be that far away. It's like living in a shoebox. Do you think your mum and dad will marry Rebecca one night this week? It'll do us good to get out together and have a drink. Yeah, if you like. Oh, what's it like in that club round the corner? Small. It's all right. And did you just go there with that mic the other night? Yeah. See, being married doesn't mean we both still can't go out and enjoy ourselves, does it? No, of course not. As long as we trust one another. It's the most important thing. Yeah. I'm glad things seem to be working out for us. You should get yourself out with your old mates more and all. I promised your mum we'll start going to aerobics with her. That sounds exciting. You should be glad to get on with your mum. Most people can't stand their in-laws. I suppose so. I'm glad when we get a place of our own, though. The three of us can't squash in here forever. I wouldn't hold me breath. It's hard getting a flat these days, and this job's only temporary. I might phone up the council today, see how you get on the waiting list. Your mum was telling me she's heard about people getting places dead quick. Come in. I'm uh, getting off now. Rosie's just taking Rebecca around to the shops with her. Any chance of a lift out? I'm going to be late otherwise. What? <sighs> no chance. I'm not being seen giving lifts to a scab. What are you going on about? There's not even a strike. Wouldn't make any difference to you if there was. You've still got scab mentality. Dismantling your own dad's factory. So are you saying that I should pack it in, then? I want to support me wife and kid, then. Stop trying to be clever, eh? You're the only one who's making a big fuss about all of this. Nobody else, apart from your mate Joey, has even said anything to me. That's because most of them are just kids like you. They've never known a Labour government. They don't know any difference. See you, Sarah, love. Sorry to bore you with politics at this time in the morning. Don't worry. I'm used to it by now. So you're not going to give us a lift, then? 
What do you think, Sonny Jimbo? Oh, it's you. Thought I could smell the shaking back. Very <laughs> funny. Hey, what you make of his new haircut? I know. I've just been saying it knocks years off him. You sure? I think I made quite a good job of it, considering the scissors were blunt. All I needed to do was lose a few pounds. No one will recognise him. Uh, if you've quite finished talking about me like I'm not here, anyway, you've got enough jobs to do, haven't you, without turning me into some kind of male model? <laughs> some chance. I reckon the Farnham should be giving me danger money, working next door to Dee Dee. What's she been saying now? Well, I told her to go for the test. She starts kicking off on me. Yeah, well, you can't really blame her, can you, love? I mean, you did lead us all up the garden path. Whose side are you on? I'm on my own side. You're not the only one on Dee Dee's hit list, you know. I'm persecuted and all. And don't forget, it was my money that you wasted when you suddenly just changed your mind at the last minute. And what you care about most? Me and Josh's happiness? Or the money? Bev, don't ask staff questions, love. I just hoped that if we all went through with it, then we could shut Dee Dee up once and for all. I don't want to put Josh through all that. Why should he be the one to suffer? He's done nothing wrong. He's happy the way things are. Hi. Hi. Mwah. I'm sorry I didn't come home last night. I went out for a drink with Chris and ended up staying on the couch. Oh, I've got a lecture this afternoon, so I've just got time to have a quick bath and get changed. Where are those books I left on the unit? Um, I'll put them up in your room. All oh, right, thanks. Do you want a cup of tea? No, thanks. Guess what? What? Chris has asked me if I want to go away with her in the summer holidays. Be all right with you, won't it? How long for? Well, we don't know yet. We've got to arrange it all. Oh, where do you plan on going? All over Europe. Well, how do you plan to afford that? It'll cost a fortune. No, well, it won't be that expensive. We'll just be staying in hostels and that. And Chris said she'll loan me the money if I'm short. Well, you don't want to go getting yourself into debt. No, well, there's no rush to pay her back. Beth, about Chris. What? Well, the thing is... Do you think it's safe for two young girls to travel around Europe on their own? Mum, of course it will. Everybody does it. And don't worry, I'll be with Chris. You know how sensible she is. I'll be in good hands, won't I? I'll just go and run my bath. So what sort of food will you have in this restaurant of yours? I don't know. We haven't decided on the menu yet. Greek's my favourite. You'd ask for beef and they give you the whole cow. All right, Max. Just popped in to go over the brewery details. Yeah, well, never mind that. I want you to get on the phone to this Kenny McGuire fella. Tell him to meet us down at the side of the savvy. Why? Well, why do you think, Max? So we can get our money back? No, Barry, no, I don't think that's very wise. This Maguire man, he's dangerous. Who knows what he's capable of? He's a gangster. He likes to think he is, but I've been doing a bit of research on him. It turns out he's just some dickhead, some jumped-up little loan shark who's got too big for his boots. All the same, I, I, I prefer not to get on the wrong side of him. You just leave him to me. Kenny Maguire. Oh, hello, Mr. Farnham. What can I do for you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Farnham. I'm afraid that's impossible today. He says he can't make it. Tell him he's got no choice. Oh, I'm very sorry, but today is the only convenient day for my partner. Tell him the deal's off, then. I can't say that. Say it. Well, in that case, Mr. Maguire, um, I'm afraid we're going to have to call our deal off. Who do you think you are? That deal, as you call it, can be terminated by me and me only. I'm sorry, but you've left us with no other option. All right, all right. Right, we'll play it your way. I'll see you up there in about half an hour, and this better be worth it. Uh, Beth, I need to talk to you. What about? This is very difficult for me. I know 
I know about you and Chris. You know what? You know very well what I'm talking about. I know, I know what's been going on. I saw you both kissing at the club the other night. I mean, why didn't you ever tell me? Well, why do you think? What do you mean that you saw us? How did you find out? Oh, who's that? Afternoon, Mrs. Jordash. You're looking particularly attractive today. I like your hair. Look, this isn't a very good time. If you want your money, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. I'm afraid that won't be convenient. Well, that's hard luck because now is inconvenient for me. Well, you weren't spying on us, were you? Well, someone must have told you. It's not important. Well, it may not be to you, but it is to me. I want to know who I can and can't trust. Who was it? Was it... Was it Rachel or Sinbad? How many others know? I mean, why didn't you ever tell me? I didn't think we had any secrets. Now, I want some answers. Oh. Just in that fella in his big flash car. Looked like he had a right cob on. What are you doing home? I forgot my chemistry homework. I get detention if it's not handed in by this afternoon. Where'd you go and get dressed? I'm not happy about this at all. Do you want to get that money back or not? Yeah, of course I do, but I'm... But nothing. There's only one way of dealing with the likes of Maguire, and that's to give him a taste of his own medicine. I don't want any violence. Don't worry, Max, I won't be harming a hair on me yet. Well, what then? Well, I'll just be warning him off, having a word with him, that's all. Now, look, you get down the sights, I'll be right behind you. Well, you better had me, because I don't want to be left with him on my own like a sitting duck. Look, I've told you in a couple of minutes, all right. Cross me heart, hope to die. Morning. Hey, I need a word with you. Sorry, I've got to get over to work. Why wouldn't you answer the door to me this morning? Sorry, were you knocking? I mustn't have heard you. Look, this is your final one. What are you out of there today? What's the of sudden urgency? Because it's mine legally now. Contracts have been signed and exchanged. You don't seem to realise we're not talking about any old house here. We're talking about our place of worship. We have an emotional attachment to it. You're going to have an emotional attachment to the end of my fist in a minute. Now, I want you out the house today. You make it sound so simple. Where would we go? Well, don't say you haven't been warned. I realise this must be very difficult for you to comprehend, but the fact of the matter is, Jesus wants us to stay in that house, and there's nothing you can say or do to change that. <laughs> <sighs> do it again if it makes you feel any bigger. You can hit me as hard as you like. You'll never break my faith. You'll never get rid of us. We've got God on our side. Are oh, you nutty? That's it. <laughs> Look, love, I'm sorry if I upset you before, but well, what did you expect? Just fed up with people trying to interfere with our lives all the time. Yeah, well, you know Dee Dee, don't you? She doesn't give up easily. Yeah, well, she's going to have to eventually, because I'm not having those tests. Well, that's it, then, isn't it? Nothing Dee Dee can do about it. You do understand, don't you? I just want you to be happy, that's all. OK. Look, I've got an plan to cash and carry. If I'm not back by the time Jackie finishes, we'll keep an eye on the shop for us. Yeah, all right. Good girl. See you after. Jack, I'm just up and down the cash and carry, love. Bev says keep an eye on the place if I'm not back by the time you knock off. All right, then. See you around. All right. Is everything all right? Oh, I could murder Dee Dee sometimes. Why can't you just leave us in peace? It's run OK? Yeah. I just wish I didn't have to lie to him about these stupid tests. I can't tell him I really went. What if Josh does turn out to be Mike's? What am I going to do then? Well, it doesn't matter, does it? Because this way you'll be the only one to find out. So even if the waste does come to the waste, Ron need never know. Accident. Oh, well, what's it look like? Maybe it was a sign from God. You were trying to break into his house after all. This is my house. It was quite bad, that. Let's have a look. Look, just get off, eh? I don't know what you're looking to smug for. I'll be back. What's going on? Mr. McGuire, glad you could take it. Well, according to you, I didn't have a choice. I don't like being threatened. No threats were intended. It's just my partner can be a little impulsive. So what's with all the urgency? 
What's so important it couldn't wait until tomorrow? I think we'd better wait for my partner. Let him explain. Do you mean he's not here yet? He'll be here any second. A couple of minutes, he said. Well, he better had be, because I've had a bad enough day as it is. I could do without all this. Don't worry, don't worry. He'll definitely be here. Well, it better be something very urgent, because I'm not in the mood for taking any crap. About me and Chris. No, honest. Well, somebody must have told her. Well, it wasn't me. Mum, remember I'm going to Chantelle's after school. Well, make sure you're back by nine. I will. See ya. Well then. Well then, what? When did all this start? I don't know. A few months ago. Why, Beth? Well, why do you think? Well, I don't know. I don't know why you suddenly turned this way. I mean, you never used to be like this. You've had boyfriends. I mean, what sort of things are they teaching you at university? You don't understand. Oh, no, I don't. I don't think I want to. Well, if that's your attitude. Well, how do you expect me to react? I thought you might try and understand. Oh, and I think about all the time she's had the cheek to come around here. I mean, I used to think she was so nice. I've, I felt safe knowing you were with her, and all the time she's... But don't go blaming Chris. You didn't force me to go out with her. Well, it's got to stop, Beth. It's got nothing to do with you. For God's sake, apart from anything else, the woman's your teacher. Mum, I'm not in the infants anymore. Can't you see? It's not right. I know you've had a hard time, but this isn't the answer. You can say whatever you like, but it isn't going to change the way I feel. Beth! <sighs> what happened? Oh, it's just a little cut. It's nothing serious. It looks worse than it is. Let me see. How did you do it? I just caught it on the net. Ow! You'll have to go to hospital. I can't. I should have been at a meeting 20 minutes ago. Your meeting can wait. It can't wait. Well, you won't be able to drive. There's blood everywhere. Yeah, well, I'll manage. You're right. Well, let me drive at least, and then I'm taking you straight to hospital. If you insist. Well, come on, we better get going now. Can't you just phone whoever it is you're meeting and explain what's happened? It's not as simple as that. Come on, I'll explain to you on the way. Thanks very much, Dad. What for? Driving past me before. I'm sorry, I mustn't have seen you. It's miles from that bus stop and all. Well, look on the bright side, lad. The exercise will do you good. I phoned up the hours in today. They said all we've got to do is go down and put our names on the list. Yeah? Then wait ten years. Oh, it's worth giving it a go. Well, I was thinking we could go now before they close. I've only just got him from work. Well, the sooner you get yourself on the list, the sooner you'll have a place of your own. Dad's right. There's no time like the present. And you can leave Rebecca there with me. Oh, don't you mind? No, she's no trouble. She's made up playing in the back. But I've got to move on, lad, if you want to get there before they shut. Yeah, all right. I can't think what could have happened to I don't like people who waste my time or tell me what to do or where to be. I realise how inconvenient this must be for you, Mr McGuire. I am terribly sorry. Uh, let me offer you another coffee. It's uh, the least I can do. I didn't come here to spend the afternoon drinking coffee. I just hope he hasn't had an accident along the way. Well, I hope for his sake that he has. And it had better be serious. Because no other excuse is good enough. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> Here he is now. Well, about time and all. You better have his excuses ready, that's all I can say. Well, I think you should be the one getting your excuses ready. You what? Listen, uh, Maguire, I don't like you and I'm not scared to say it. Oh, gone all brave, have you? Now your mate's here to hold your hand. No, no, I can stand up for myself, thank you very much. Your sort doesn't scare me. Uh, is, um, is Barry with you? I'm afraid he's been a little delayed. Delayed? What were you saying, Mr Farnham? Uh, how, um, 
How many sugars do you take in your coffee? Stick your coffee. You've wasted enough of my time. You've waited this long. A few more minutes won't make any difference. Do you mind keeping out of this, love? It's business. I'm sure Max wouldn't mind if I stayed, would you, Max? Uh, no, uh, absolutely no. Not. Um, after all, we are all family here. That's settled, then. So, do you take milk and sugar, Mr. McGuire? Oh, I where do you two off? Just not wait to the hours and to put our names down on the wait list for a flat. Oh, Rosie, right, so you looking for a place of your own, then? Yeah, your Rosie's been great, but we can't stay there forever. There's loads of empty houses by us, you know. They're just all boarded up, and the nice houses and all three bedrooms and an upstairs bathroom. It'd be lovely if they were done up. Mm, I don't know whether we'll get a house. Some of the ones by us have been empty for donkey's years. They're just being left for the kids to wreck. And they go on about there being hours and shortages. No, yeah. I just go into the pizza place, get some change for the bus. I'll see you, Mo. Yeah, see you soon, love. So, did you enjoy yourself in the club the other night? Yeah, it was all right. You seem to be enjoying yourself very much to me. Who was that girl you left with? What girl? The one I saw you necking the gob off out here. What? She must have been all of 15. Don't stand there looking all innocent, I saw you. Look, Mo, I know I was out of order, but I was drunk. It was just a kiss, nothing else. You know what it's like. Oh, too right, I do. But I'm warning you, Carl. You have a thought for one minute you were messing Sarah about. I'm not messing her about. Yeah, well, you better not be, because if you were, I wouldn't have second thoughts about blowing you up. I still haven't had a letter from him, you know. The only thing I ever get from the postman's bills. Just wish he'd write to me. I mean, one letter. Not much to ask for, is it? Just feels like a real slap in the face after everything I've put up with. Hiya, Jack. Oh, how are you do? How are you? Not too bad, you know. Have I got a welly on me head or something? Did you see the look she gave me then? Stupid cow. Who does she think she is? Do you know what? If the baby is Ron's, I'm going to have the results blown up and billboarded over there so she has to look at them every day. When did you get the results? Sometime next week. Do you have to go down the hospital for them or what? No, it's a private place. That's why Ron was kicking off about the cost. They had sent to the person who paid for them. What? So they get sent to Ron? Oh, sugar. What new thoughts about that? Why am I such a meth? Oh, Jack, what am I going to do? Right. Enough of all this. You've wasted enough of my time. Hey, love, do you mind leaving us alone? We've got some private business to discuss, haven't we, Mr Farnham? I'd prefer to stay. Yeah? Well, I'd prefer it if you left. What the...? What the hell are you doing? Don't believe we've ever met. At my park. Name's Barry Grant. I believe you owe me two grand. Well, well, what are you doing with that thing? You made a bit of a mess here a couple of weeks ago. It's not nice when strangers vandalise your property, is it? No! Oh! It's a pity you never took out a protection policy for yourself, eh? <laughs> Jimmy Corkill. No. It's not a prison visit, no. Right. I was, uh, I was going to come round later. I'll be at work. But when you finish, then? I trusted you. Yeah, OK. Well, what was I supposed to do, eh? If I can't trust you. Oh, I know. OK, you tell me what I should have done. Go on, tell me. What should I have done? Told on Beth? No chance. Well, you could have warned me. You could have given me some kind of hint. No, I couldn't. What kind of fella do you think I am? I just had to wait and give her time until she was ready to tell you herself. Where does this leave us, eh? I don't know. 
Oh, God, this is stupid. You know how I feel about you? Like, two days ago, you said... We nearly... Look, I'm not gonna let you push me out just because I wouldn't betray your daughter's confidence. I'm coming round later. I'd rather you didn't. Well, OK. Well, I'll see you round then, maybe. So what happens if this Kenny Maguire comes looking for revenge? You'll have to thump him with your right hand. He won't. Well, I would if you did that to my car. Well, if you came looking for revenge, I might quite enjoy it. Listen, if you're worried about getting caught in a crossfire, don't be. Maguire's only small time. Anyway, I'll be out of here next week, as soon as I get my house back from the God Squatters. You'll have the flat all to yourself. Oh, I can't stay here. You'll want to rent it when you move. Well, that's the plan, yeah. So why not to you? I mean, do you fancy renting off me? Depends how much you're asking. Depends how much you want to pay. I'll get it. We'll discuss details in a minute. Oh, it's you. How's the car? Gear's a bit stiff, are you? Aren't you going to invite me in? Well, it depends if you got the two grand that you misappropriated from my company. Come in. Ah, oh, Mrs... Crosby. Oh, what a very pleasant surprise. Oh, Barry, there you go. Two grand. I hope you appreciate how lightly I've let you off, Maguire. Oh, I do, yeah. So... The next time you want to play out with the big boys, remind yourself that you're simply not up to it. It takes brains. Look, I just want to say it was a genuine mistake. If I'd have known you were involved, I never would have dreamt of... <sighs> no offence, like. But that partner of yours, he's a sitting duck. He's a bit wet-like, isn't he? This is 200 short. Ah, oh, yeah, well, I, uh... Well, I've been quoted 200 quid to get my car fixed, so I thought you might give... And another ton. What's that for? Concrete's expensive these days, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. A piece of advice, Maguire. Stick to frightening sad little people with sad little money problems, right? You are a very small fish in a very small pond. Stay there. Leave the big things to the boys that can handle it. Fair enough. It cost me a lot of time on this project, which means you owe me, right? Right. Oh, I thought you were out. I'm revising. I've got exams all this week. <sighs> Are you still angry with me? I wasn't angry, Beth. You were? No, not angry. Just upset. Very, very upset. And disappointed. What disappointed in me? Oh, well, it's not what I'm... I mean, I don't think this is... It's not going to make you happy, is no, it? it's made me happier than anything else in my whole life. <sighs> I knew you'd take it badly. It's that noise? It's a tap dripping. Oh, my God! Quick, get a bucket. I'll see what's happening upstairs. You are the most pig-headed, self-satisfied, stupid, insensitive, self-righteous man I've ever... What's he done now? I am sorely tempted, Patricia, to slap your father very hard round the head with a lethal object. Why don't you, then? Because he's too thick-headed to even notice. Do you know what he has done? He's separated the entire contents of the fridge into two piles. His pile, my pile. He is currently working his way through the vegetable rack, and we now own three and a half carrots each. I'm amazed he hasn't <laughs> taken out the tape measure, and it is not funny. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, how long is he going to keep this up, for God's sake? Mum, this girl, was there something in it? I don't know, Patricia. I don't know what might have happened if Jane had stayed around. Probably nothing. But things aren't as cut and dried as your father makes out. Oh. Now I've shocked you, haven't I? No. Yes. It's always strange discovering your parents have got a past. 
I remember your oh, grandmother Patricia, once telling Mrs. me. That... You don't know any good plumbers, do you? All the ones we've tried have got these massive call out charges. A plumber? Is it serious? Well, there's a leak and there's water pouring through the kitchen ceiling. Well, what about Simbad? He could probably fix it for you. Oh, um, yeah, of course, I'll go and see if he's in. No, because he's out. Well, have you tried turning the water off at the mains? Oh. What about Mr. Hobbs? He's very reasonable. Highfield Lane. You'll find him in the book. Oh, okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Are you sure Sinbad's out? Yes. Listen, put the kettle on. We'll have a coffee. I won't be a sec. I could do with ten minutes' sanity before I face your father again. <laughs> Jean? She's gone inside. Ah. Did you want her? It was just. Uh... I just wanted to explain certain arrangements I've made concerning the contents of the cupboards. Well, he's coming as soon as he's got this other job out of the way. The ceiling's all right, miss. Oh, it's one thing after another. <laughs> Never stops, does it? The people who live in their flat above Chris like the bath overflow ones. The whole ceiling came down on the bed. So. Not talk about her. I really, really like her. Well, you really, really like Peter Harrison. No, I didn't. Not really. Yes, you did. You're crazy about him. This is just. Oh, I don't know what it is. But you've just decided, because of what happened with your dad, because Peter turned out to be a rapist, that you don't want anything more to do with men. It's not like that at all. Well, that's what it looks like to me. Looks like you're playing around pretending to be something you're not because you're scared of getting involved with another man. Why don't you use the right word, Mum? Go on, say it. Say lesbian. No. Lesbian. I won't say it because I don't believe that's what you are. Mum, it isn't just an anti-man thing. It's got nothing to do with Dad. It just feels right with women. I like women. Well, how do you know? You can't say that. I always have no, to. But listen, everybody does. Before your dad, I had loads of very close girlfriends. I mean, look at you and Margaret. Mum... Margaret and me... Well, that's a perfect example of what I mean. I'm not talking about friendship. That's not what I mean. Chris and I... You mean sex? I mean gentleness and tenderness and total understanding. You never got much gentleness from Dad, did you? Or happiness. Not the sort of happiness that me and Chris give each other. She did do. Done any messages for her? There must be something you want me to say to her. No, I just want to know she's okay, that's all. Um. So, how are you doing? You're looking well. Looking very well, actually. Yeah, well, that's four weeks off the smack, isn't it? Four weeks? Well, that's brilliant. Was it tough? Did you have been a Aussie in that? Just left me to it. To be honest with you, Sin, I can't remember much. The first week I was totally out of my skull, like a bad dose of the flu. And now, throwing up, stomach cramps, the shakes. Now I'm all right now. Getting there, you know. I have started doing things. I am working in the laundry, you know. Signed up for the French class. Signed up on Thursday. A French class, you? I'm not actually doing it for the French, you know, not as such. Oh, it's the bear that's fun in the class, you know. Fantasy time, eh? Dead ringer for Metal Street. Yeah, I suppose you could do a few allergies in here, couldn't you? Open university degree like that Mac Vicker fella. Uh, Not in nine months, I can't. Oh, no, right. I think that's done it. They're corroded, isn't it? Mm. No, we should be OK now. Do you want a sandwich or something for your dinner? No, I'm not very hungry, thanks. No, not me. Does the university know that Chris is gay? Oh, Mum, don't start blaming Chris again. Well, I'm sorry, but I do blame her. It's not on somebody in her position going around seducing students. Uh, she didn't seduce me. Of course she did. She must have put the idea into your head. No, she didn't, because I was... Uh, I was already feeling... Oh, well, it, it wasn't Chris's fault. Well, whose was it, then? Who did put the idea into your head? The what... 
Was there somebody else before Chris? Mm. Was there? No. Was there? No, I've just told you. There was no one. Now, will you stop going on about Chris? Is there anyone hanging around it? Where? Any other men sniffing around Jackie? God knows, Jimmy. What do you think? Well, she's a beautiful woman, my Jackie. She still turns in, you know. But lots of fellas queuing up for her if they knew she was free. Oh, come on, Jimmy. You know Jackie. She's not even gonna look at another fella. <sighs> she might. She might decide it's about time she had a decent fellow in her life for a change. Well, if you're that worried about it, why don't we send her a visit in order? See ya. She's desperate to see you. Oh, Jimmy. No. I've made up my mind. I'm, I'm not dragging her this low. Just let her forget about me. Well, she's not going to do that, is she? I don't know, Sim. I've put her through too much. I can't expect... I lie awake at night, you know. Torturing myself with the thoughts of Jackie and another man. <coughs> I make myself imagine them in bed together. I want to kill him, whoever he is. And then I think, no, Soddy. That's the best thing that could ever happen to her. Another man. One who knows how special she is. Treats her special. I love her, sir. That's why Rachel was asking all those questions about, well, about... Lesbians. Was it? Yeah. I thought... Well, I always thought I was liberal about these things. You know, it's OK what anyone does as long as they don't hurt anybody else. But it does hurt. It hurts me, and I'm scared it's going to end up hurting you. Mum, you can't protect me from everything. I managed to protect you from anything yet, have I? I don't mean that. <sighs> your dad's still managing to ruin your life, isn't he? No. It's got nothing to do with him. My life's brilliant, honest. You hold hands with Chris. Mm hmm. And Chris and sleep together. The thing that scares me, and I know you say it's got nothing to do with your dad, but I don't believe that. And I'm scared you're gonna wake up ten years down the line and realise this was just a phase. But it isn't. No, listen, and then it'll be too late. Too late for what? Too late to. I don't know, to, to start your life again along the right lines. I just imagined you'd graduate, have this brilliant career, and, and then somebody very special would come along. Well, she already has. No, a man. And then there'd be babies. Oh. I'll never see your babies, will I? Don't you think about that? Don't you want children? I don't know. I always imagined I'd make your wedding dress for you. You know, sometimes, when it was bad with your dad, I used to dream about your wedding day. I used to think it'll be better for Beth. It'll be everything it's supposed to be for Beth. Mum... People who are gay, they do have long and happy relationships, just just like marriages and just as good. Oh, do they? 
And it doesn't look that way to me. It looks like they always have to lie about what they are and cope with all that prejudice. I don't want that for you. I don't want you to land up the, the weird woman down the road who lives with a butch friend and ten cats, the one the kids laugh at and everyone feels sorry for. Please don't get upset. It just means unhappiness for you. I know it shouldn't, but that's how it is. I didn't make the world. It means you've cut yourself off from all the happy, normal things. Where did I go wrong? Mm. That smells good. Oh. oh, I thought I'd overcooked it, but it isn't. Are you hungry? Anything interesting in the paper? David. What? Your lunch. My lunch is in the kitchen. I've made myself a cheese salad. Oh, for goodness sake. OK. You've made your point. Now can we please get back to normal? Either you're going deaf, my dear, or you're losing your memory. I've explained the current domestic situation to you. Several times. And I have explained to you until I am blue in the face that Jane and I... Oh, what's the point? This is a ridiculous waste of money. Would you like some bread with your salad? No, thank you. Would you like some salad with your salad? We'll eat in the kitchen. It's a little quieter. Good God, woman! Have you gone mad? Yes, I think I have. And I think I'm going to rather enjoy it. I don't see why you should corner the market. <laughs> oh, uh, I was expecting the plumber. Um, look, I'm uh, really sorry about the other day. Oh, no sweat, love. We all have our little family differences. Um, I have got the money, only not all of it. I've got a bit of a problem. Well, let's see what we can do to sort it out, shall we? Oh, Trish, looks like hard work. Yeah, it is. Also, Matt, if you've got five minutes, I think Mandy's having a bit of trouble with a hot water cylinder. I think she might appreciate some help. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, see you later. Yeah. Made a nasty mess of your ceiling. Uh, yeah. So, where's your little fat friend today, then? Um, the thing is, Mr Maguire... Kenny, please. The thing is, I need a little more time. We, um, had a bit of a disagreement. Love is Tiff? No, um, just... Well, I don't know whether he'll be paying his half, so I'm quite a bit short this week, and I think maybe I'm going to have to manage the repayments on my own from now on. Oh, in case he lets you down again. I can see you've got a lot of domestic problems, Mandy. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry I was so rude the other day. Oh, not at all. I like a woman with a bit of spirit. So, how about a cup of tea, eh? Oh, I'll tell you what I'd like. Something cool. Orange juice. Delicious. Then we can have a little chat about your financial predicament. Mm. Oh, very nice. Is this a hobby or...? Oh, no, no, I do it professionally. Men's stuff at all. Sometimes. Oh, interesting. I bought a suit Saturday. The sleeves need shortening. Well, if you'd like to bring it round. I will, Mandy, I will. That's a very generous offer. Oh, ta very much. Now, what I can do for you, Mandy, is... Uh, why don't you come and sit here? Good. I can 
can make things a little easier by offering you an alternative loan package. Now, this is the document with all the relevant details. Perhaps you'd like to peruse it. But in brief, what it means is, we take on all your debts, all your bills, including what you owe us, and we negotiate a reasonable repayment schedule. Now, the beauty of this, Mandy, is that you only have the one payment per month. So the debt takes longer to repay? Absolutely right, Mandy. Yes, spot on. I wish all my customers were as financially astute. What's a few months, eh, if you've got your peace of mind? So, if you're agreeable, um, you can see the monthly sum we suggest. Oh, oh, well, I can manage that now. Excellent. You see, I told you we could sort something out. Now, if you'd like to sign here and here... Oh, I thought you were the plumber. No, your mum said the same. I'm afraid I can't be much help on that front. Uh, and here. Oh, thank you. Good. Excellent. I think you've made a very wise decision. What's that? Just renegotiating things a little to make life easier for your mum. Uh, thanks. Right, I won't keep you. Oh, but my suit jacket. I'll drop it in next week, shall I? Yeah, and thanks for your help. I'm very grateful. Hey, we aim to please. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Did you read the small print? Yeah, of course I did. I'm not stupid. Good. Oh, and you don't have to worry about meals for me over the weekend, cos I'll be away. Where? London. Who with? Chris, we're going. Oh, no. Mum? No, I'm sorry. It's been planned for ages. <gasps> What's this woman done to you? It's like, it's like she's put some kind of spell on you. But please, please don't go to London with her. Stay here and think things through. Mum, I don't need to think. I know. We're going to London together for the weekend, and if you can't accept that, if you can't accept what I am, then there's no point even talking about it anymore, is there? I might as well just move in with her. doing? What does it look like? Please, Beth, this is ridiculous. I'll we'll pick it up after you, Nick. I don't want you going to London with her. Her name's Chris. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> Mum, I've got an exam this morning. Don't you think I've got enough to worry about as it is? I just don't want you going off for the weekend with her. Well, I'm going, whether you like it or not. Oh, come in. How's the paying your supplies visit? Oh, go in. Well, hey, Katie. Long time no see. How's it going? There's well. How are you? Sound. Yeah, I put the kettle on, eh? See our old house is still all board stuff. Haven't the new people moved in yet? Oh, can they? Your loony ex and all his mates are still in there. What? Simon's still living there? Yeah, didn't you know? Barry Grant can't get rid of them. Well, what's it got to do with Barry Grant? Well, he's the one who's bought it. Well, I just didn't know. So, have you seen Simon lately? <sighs> Unfortunately. I still have to work with him, don't I? I don't speak to him or nothing. Your pies won't see him. Eh, hey, don't you be scared of him? He's just a sweat. I know. So, does your mum know about Simon and all the loony things he's into? No. It's all over now, so we didn't tell her. But it didn't seem any point worrying her. Mm. I just want to forget it ever happened. I've put the kettle on. You can do the rest. Yeah, I'll suggest it to Max, see what he thinks. Yeah, OK, will do. See you later, Mum, bye. What's all that about? Fancy a holiday. What? Mum's come over all impulsive, decided to pack her bags and leave Dad to stew in his own juices for a while. What brought this on, then? Well, you can hardly blame her. He has been behaving like a complete Nazi lately. Where's she going? She's booked a cottage in the Cotswolds, says we'd be welcome to go along with her. Well, that sounds great, but I'm not to my eyes with the restaurants at the moment. Oh, that's a shame. Be our last chance of a holiday for a while. Well, you could still go. Wouldn't you mind? No, of course not. You deserve a little break. Mind you, the only problem is I'd be so busy with things here, I don't know whether I'd be able to cope with Thomas on my own. Well, he could come with us. Well, what about school? 
Well, he breaks up in a few weeks' time anyway. We could just take him out a bit early. Do you think that's wise? Just this once. Oh, well, I suppose so. Anyway, we should make the most of this weather while it lasts. Midsummer's day today, the nights are drawing in. God, what a depressing thought. It's as if summer never really happened. <laughs> anyway, I'll have a think about it. It'd be good to spend some time with Mum. Mm. Right, better make tracks. See you later. Bye. So, has it been all right living with your mum again? Yeah, but it's starting to do me head in a bit now. I just feel in the way all the time. Oh, couldn't you move in with your Sammy? Be mates off you back in Liverpool. Well, I was thinking that, but then I'd probably just end up babysitting all the time and they haven't really got the room. Mm. Oh, what about your Jeff? Oh, he's living with some girl he copped off with. It's love. Maybe you should get a flat in my own if I'm going to start back at college. But once the contract's on the house gets sourced and you throw Simon out, I'll get my share of the money. I don't know what to do with it. Hey, don't you worry. I'll give you the hands. Oh, that's brilliant. I'll be able to have all my flats on out and that. <laughs> don't you know, man, the idea of living on your own? Well, I'd rather share with someone. Hey, maybe I could move in with her. Would you be into that? Yeah, of course. It's just, it's a bit awkward at the moment. All oh, Mike's out most of the time and I wouldn't want to leave me mum in on her own. Well, I've got to wait till I'm 18 anyway before I get the money. In the meantime, I'm looking for a summer job. I don't suppose your mum's looking for any help at the florists? Um, I don't know. She hasn't said anything, but we could always ask her. I suppose so. Uh, I'll go over it after we've had this. Once you do get the money, I could treat us to a bit of an ology as a thank you for what you did in there. I think I'll get used to having a rich mate. Did they tell you about the new carpets I got for my living room? No. What's it like? Lovely. And it was only 250 a square yard on Broadway market. And what are you doing with the old one? I was going to throw it out. It's a bit minty. It's just that me and Carl are going to be needing things like that for when we get a place of our own. Did I hear my name taken in vain? I was just saying to Mo, we're going to have to start getting things together for our bottom drawer. All right. Never had a place of our own. We spent most of our time in married quarters together, so we never really needed to get anything before. Do you want to sell a body, love? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Actually, it's not that bad. If you threw a bit of carpet shampoo on it, it'd probably come up all right. Never throw anything out without telling us. Hmm. We'd be grateful for anything, wouldn't we, Carl? Yeah. Listen, Mike from next door's asked me to go up for a pint with him tonight. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. I'll take this out to Rebecca. Another night out with your mates, then? It's all right for some, isn't it? I'm only going for a pint. Yeah, well, it better not be, because I don't care if you're all my little nephew. You break that girl's heart, I'll break your legs. Don't say you haven't been warned. Oh, the weather's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, after you've seen me, mum, do you fancy going in the park for a sunbathe? Well, can't we just sunbathe in your back garden? No, we can't play everyone on and I'm playing tennis then, can we? Hey, what are you like, you big pair? Shut up, what are you messing? Yeah, if you say so, it's Aunt and Pierce, I'll only be a sec. Kate! Hiya. What are you doing round there? Visiting Jackie. <sighs> Do you mean to say you weren't going to pop in and see us? You're looking great. I really miss you, you know. Have you? Of course I have. Look, I know you betrayed me, all of us. But I could never hold a grudge against you. How have you been since you deserted us? All right. You don't sound too sure. Have you been finding life difficult without us? I've been fine. Why don't you come to the house and have a drink? I bet the others would love to see you. Hey, you, leave it alone. We're only talking. Yeah, well, she doesn't want to talk to you. I think Kate's capable of making up her own mind. Aren't you, Kate? Her name's not Kate, it's Casey. Now, just get lost. Come on, Kate. Come and have a coffee with us. I bet you've got loads to tell me. She's got nothing she wants to say to you. Kate, will you please tell your friend to mind her own business? Um, it is my business. She's my best mate. If you were her best mate, you'd let her think for herself. <laughs> the way you used to, you mean? Come on, Kate. Come and have a coffee with us. I've got to be back at work in an hour. One cup of coffee's not going to hurt, is it? For old time's sake? Oh, Casey, what are you doing? I know deep down... You've always known who your real friends are. Oh! oh. oh. You don't know how long oh. I've waited to do that. Nice one, Casey. Oh. Don't you dare come anywhere near me ever again.
sorry, Beth. I, I just wanted a word with Chris. I didn't know you were in there. Oh, what about? Shh. What's going on? I need to talk to you. There's an exam going on in there. Would you please go and wait in the foyer? I don't think we want to have any discussions in public. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. I thought you'd be in your office. Why did you have to come here? Well, I just had to, love. No, you didn't have to. You just came here to embarrass me and ruin everything, didn't you? No, it's, it's not like that. Beth. Do you realise how important this exam is to her? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I didn't plan on seeing her. I was just hoping to have a quiet word with you. Well, you couldn't have chosen a worse time. <sighs> OK. When will you be free? Not for a while yet. That's all right. I'm in no hurry. I'll wait. Right, then. You'd better wait in my office. Hey, I wish I'd have had a video camera with us the other day. The face on that Maguire. I could have sent it to Jeremy Beadle. I don't think Kenny Maguire's the type of ever see the funny side. That place, we got our money back, didn't we? You don't think he'll try something now in revenge? Nah, we scared him off. Now he knows who he's dealing with, doesn't he? How's the hand? I'll live. Which is more than I can say for him once I've finished with him. How do you mean? Well, I've tried being reasonable. It didn't work out, so now it's time to get heavy. Do you think that's wise? We worked with our mate Kenny, didn't it? And last time you got heavy with them, you ended up needing stitches. Yeah, I won't be using my hands this time, will I? Meaning what? Work it out. I hope you don't mean what I think you do. Let's see if that Simon looks so smug when he's got a gun pointing at his head. Barry. <laughs> Barry. Oh, she sounds your mum, isn't she? Yeah, she can be all right sometimes, I suppose. Are you sure she doesn't mind? She wouldn't have asked you to move back in with us if she didn't want you to. Oh, me as well. And anyway, it'd have been a bit mad you having to commute from Manchester just away from your mum's shop, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, I suppose I would have moved in with our Jeff or Sammy otherwise. Yeah, well, you don't have to now, do you? Hey, thank God that Jean Crosby suddenly decided to go on holiday. Right. How's that for good timing? <sighs> hey, uh, do you fancy going out tonight and celebrating? Well, I'm not rich yet, you know, I'm a bit skint. Well, we could just go in there. I know it's a bit nerfy, but uh, we'll still have a laugh and it's safe on taxis. All right. Come on, then we best go home and start glamming ourselves up. <laughs> Sit down. I'd rather stand. Um, not sure what you hope to achieve by coming down here like this. You've probably ruined Beth's chances of passing that exam. I think if anybody's ruining my daughter's life, it's you. That's not true. She was a normal, healthy girl until you came along. She's a normal, healthy girl now. I mean, what do you think you're playing at, taking her to London for some dirty weekend? We're just going to visit some friends of mine, that's all. <sighs> well, it's not on. I won't allow it. Look, I appreciate how difficult this must be for you, but you've got to accept that Beth and I are having a relationship, a normal relationship. I haven't got to accept any such thing. Beth doesn't need this. She needs your support. She needs you to try and understand. All I understand is that you've taken advantage of an innocent young girl. Beth's an adult. She knows her own mind. She'd been wanting to tell you the truth for ages. She was just too scared. Now I can see why. Well, you must have persuaded her. You must have talked her into it. Oh, that's not true. How can you talk someone into being gay? But before you came along, she had boyfriends and everything. How do you explain that? I'm oh, sure she must have been very confused. Well, you're the one who's confused. You're the one who's made her feel it's normal to be like you. That's not true. When I first met Beth, she was on the verge of splitting up with Margaret. That's how I got to know her. She used to come and talk to me about their problems. What? Beth and Margaret? Oh. I don't believe this. I'm sorry. But there's no use trying to lay the blame on me. Beth had discovered her sexuality long before I came on the scene. There's nothing you or anyone else can do to change that. Hey, where are you going tonight? Well, we're going to start off with La Luz and then see what happens. Who are you going with? The car's next door. Oh, hey, we're not going to be stuck with our mic and his mates all night. Look at his car. There's family, the ones who moved into the Harrisons. Oh, what's he like? Is he good looking? I haven't seen him. Probably not, though. Our mic's mates are all usually vile. What time are you going out? Said I'd knock over to Mike's at about eight. Oh, the state of this room. 
impossible to keep it tidy. Even if we get a one-bedroom flat, it'll seem like a palace compared to this room. Yeah. I wonder how long it'll be before we hear anything. Don't know. Uh, your dad's going down the chippy. Does anyone fancy anything? Not for me. I'm off now. Are you letting them out again? Again? I haven't been out all week. Don't you fancy going, Sarah? I don't mind babysitting Rebecca. Uh, we're going to go on the local dive for a pint. It's not a big night out or anything. Well, I'm a bit tired anyway. I think I'd prefer a quiet night in. Right, I'll get off then. Don't wait up for me. See you later. See you, love. I'm going on holiday. So, you were persuaded then? Yeah, seemed like too much of a good opportunity to miss. So, when are you going? Tomorrow. So soon? Gonna miss me? Of course I am. Mm, plenty to keep you busy, though. You can redecorate the living room for a start. Mm. I'm sick of looking at that common wallpaper. Any more orders before you jet off to Sunny Cotswolds? You could always help me pack. Hmm. Two pints of lager, please. Aren't you gonna offer me one? Go on, then. You're awfully generous. What's just walked in? I'm gonna kick the blob one out of it. Hey, that's my sister. Sorry, mate, no offense. All right. Hiya. So, uh, aren't we gonna introduce us then? Oh, yeah, this is my sister Jackie. This is my mate Katie and Mrs. Carl. Hiya. Nice to meet you. And you? I believe you live next door to us. Yeah, that's right. It seems weird, I've never seen you before. Can I get you both a drink? Yeah, Tom. I'll have a Southern Comfort and lemonade, please. I'll have the same, thanks. Just as well, I brought a few bubbles. Hey, what Sam is saving me you back on the air? Who cares what he says? Go and grab a table, girls. Bring them over. And two Southern Comforts and lemonade, please. And don't forget, I'll be keeping my eye on you. I'm only buying them a drink. They are neighbours. of alcohol, don't you think? I suppose so. Don't tell him that, though. He's big-headed enough. <laughs> but, well, I think I'll go up to bed. All right, then, love. See you in the morning. I hope Carl isn't getting too drunk. Does me head in when he comes in bevied and I'm stone-cold sober. He should be back soon. Yeah. Good night. Good night, love. This music's crap. I'm going to see if I can get the DJs to put something decent on, eh? Uh, yeah, that's for some end people. <clears throat> so, uh, how long have you been married for, then? Too long. We only got married because she got pregnant. Why don't we wait to do the decent thing, but it just hasn't worked out. Why is that? We were both kids when we got married. We'd only just left school. I think we both realised now it's never going to work. We're just not suited. I suppose we've grown apart. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I do. It's dead sad, that. If things are that bad, though, I suppose it's best you both get out now while you're still young. That's what I think. I mean, we can still keep in touch with one another. We can still be friends. Oh, yeah, that's that good, that. Having a nice time, Carl, do you? Yes, thanks, Auntie Mo, are you? Oh, yeah, I love collecting glasses. It's me hobby. Do you fancy going on into town? Eh, uh, yeah, if you like. Uh, me and Jackie are going to go into sales. Anyone fancy it? Uh, yeah. Um, well, no, I'm a bit tired, actually. I think I had to with an early night. What about you, Mike? Do you fancy it? Uh, no, no, you're all right. I'm a bit knackered myself. Looks like it's just you and me, then. I'll just go for a burst. What are you playing at? He's only taking me for a drink. He's a married man with a kid. Oh, they're practically divorced. He's just told me. Look, just be careful, OK? You just don't like the idea of your copping off me to copping off with your sister. 
Pete has never bothered you before about him being married. Is it where I'm going to you? No. I think I'll just go back to your house with Mike. If you mind walking me back to you? No, not at all. Uh, just get into my bed for tonight if you like. Um, I'll see you when I get in. Hey, it's all alright. No, look at show. Casey is lovely. He's dead sensitive for my show. Sounds like he has a really hard time. We all set then? Yeah. Um, I'll see you later. See ya, see ya. Barry around. He's in the office, come through. We need to talk. Oh, well, I think you've said all I need to hear. Well, please, Beth, stay here. Why should I? You made it perfectly clear what you think of me. You've ruined my exams, and not only that, you had to go and humiliate me in front of Chris and the whole university. You've ruined everything, Mum. Well, when will you be back? Well, I don't know, because the way I'm feeling now, I may never be back, and you'll only have yourself to blame. Time, please. Have you got no else to go to? I don't suppose you'd let me get off Auntie tonight. I've got a split nerd, eh? Yeah, I suppose so. You can do the rest of the glasses in the morning. Oh, nice one. I appreciate that, Barry. Hello. It's getting a bit late for you as well, isn't it, Max? I don't want Patricia thinking I'm a bad influence on you. The reason why I really came was I, I wanted to talk to you about this squatter business. Look, Barry, I've been worried sick. I thought if I could talk to you man to man over a drink, I might get you to change your mind. I've told you what I'm going to do. Threatening violence isn't going to solve anything. It might make matters worse. Believe me, Max, it's the only way to deal with people like that. But it's your house. You've got rights. There's no need to take the law into your own hands. So what do you suggest? Well, surely it would be better to take the legal path, rather than doing something you might end up regretting. And what could Zach want to do? You might be surprised. Look, we tried it your way with Maguire, didn't we? And it didn't work out. No, leave this one to me. Let me do it my way, just this once. But I promise you, we'll get the right results. All right, suppose it's worth a try. Believe me, it is. It'll be legal and clean. I know a few people. Pull a few strings. Bailiffs will get them out of there in no time at all. But if it doesn't work out, we go back to doing things my way. Right? Especially after the tourist trap and surprising the patient to take a cool drink and admire a local craftsman's work of the and no trust will be exerted to buy. These people take pride in their city despite its obvious problems and delight to be the first to crack a joke at the traffic congestion. It's broken down buses for the crumbling pavements. The great strength is not its historic monuments but the humour and tolerance of its people. One delight not to be really enjoyed myself. We'll have to do it again sometime. Eh, uh, yeah. When? How about tomorrow? Yeah, no worries. Club at about eight. All right. I'll see you there then.
All right, Mum, you're up late. Yeah? So are you. What's going on? That's what we'd like to know. Did your girlfriend get home all right? I think you've got some explaining to do. Morning, my love. You shouldn't have let me sleep in till this time. Why not? You deserve it. Want a brew? No, tar. I didn't hear the post gone. No, that's because you were cold, my toes. Um, anything for me? No. You sure? Why are you expecting something? Eh, uh, isn't that. Tell you what, though. You can pay some of them bills for me if you like. Oh, you're all right. Anyway, how much you know they're all bills? Oh, that's true. Suppose me nights would matter come a week early, eh? <laughs> well, if they depress you that much, why don't you leave them here with me and you can worry about them later? Ah, if only we could put everything off till after, eh? No. I'll have a look at them down the shop and do a good depression. Eh, uh, don't go yet. Why? Well, what's up? Well, um, I thought I could come in with you. Eh? Hey? Well, I thought I might scrounge a lift. Where to? Max Barnum's. You're not due there for ages yet. Well, I just fancied mooching around the shop with you for a bit. And do what, like? Soothe your fever brow while you check our debts. I like to do my bit. Yeah, well, the thing is, you see, love, I'm late as it is. Well, just let me get swords and grab Josh. I'll be with you in two minutes. Morning. Just about. Thought you'd be in work. Day off. Snap. He's dirty. Yeah. Set her in. You mean your wife? No, she's taking your daughter into town. Oh. Why? Got someone else in there, have you? Bloody hell, Ma! Oh, Ma me. I suppose you've told her then. Told who what? Sarah, about ten ton Tessie snitching on me. Don't start slagging our mo. She wasn't the one out clubbing it with some schoolie. So have you said anything? No, not yet. Not till I find out what the hell you think you're playing at. My partner in crime. What are you up to? Oh, nothing much. A quick site visit and then back to a mountain of paperwork. What kind? The boring kind. Is there any other? Yeah, there is. The kind with notice to quit on from the bailiffs. Ah, that. Yes, that. Well, um, have no fear because it's all sorted out. What, you've sorted already? I don't sound so surprised. But what's the score then? Three weeks. Saint Simon over there will be leading his followers off the cross and into the wilderness for all eternity. Be serious, Max. Sorry? Three weeks. Well, that's no time. Well, it is when you got Charlie Manson holed up in your gaff. <laughs> you know that this is the best way to get rid of them. Have a bit of patience. Well, that's one thing I'm running out of, Max. Barry. I'll see ya. Where the hell is it? Have the test results come? Yorkshire postmark. What else is it gonna be? You put open it then, hadn't you? Yeah. I tell you, Jackie, if I have to express one more pint of milk, I mean, who wants to spend the rest of their life with the nipple stuck in a couple of plungers? That's charming, that is. Sorry, baby talk. Uh, have you come here just to put my staff off there, didn't it? Who? Me? Be all right for a minute, Jack. Uh, yeah, fine. Just gonna have a quick word with McJono. He's trying to con me into bungling him a few quid towards his footy team for next season. OK. Oh, and hey, if you want to make yourself useful, what about that brew? Oh, 
Please, God, give us a break, eh? Here goes nothing. I don't believe it. Hello, love. Hi. You all right? Yeah, fine. Oh, I was hoping you'd be back. Yeah, well, I only went away for the weekend. What do you think Chris has sold me off to the white slave trade? Well, I was worried about you, that's no, all. No, there's no need. What happened about your exam? I'll probably have to do it again. Sorry. No, it don't matter. If I'm good enough, I'll pass the recent. That's the end of the story. Look, Beth. Are you off out? Oh, I'm into town, but it can wait. No, go. We need to talk. Mum, please, just leave it. I'm not in the mood, OK? All that flame and worry inside and the right letter? No. Yorkshire bloody postmark. Still. You've uncovered one little secret, haven't you? What, this? Can you believe him? It's that, that grey with dark ages, the hair care for the 90s. So Ronnie dyes his hair, eh? To be honest, I did have my suspicions at one time it was a wig, you know? Jackie! <laughs> so, uh, how long do you reckon he's been... Shh, oh, shh. Yeah. All right, girls? Fine. Kettle boiled. I'll do it now. Is there something up? Um, no. We were just talking about you, actually, weren't we, Jack? Um, yeah. Thought me is with Vernon. <laughs> we were just saying, um, bit of a dark horse, really, aren't you? Hey. Are, are you two on your soft half hour or what? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Blake. <laughs> Blake? Carrington. What is up with you? This is something in the air. Not that I know of. What is it, dandruff? No, really, Ron, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's not bear droppings. Your hair's perfect, honest. I made the bloody tea myself. <laughs> yeah? Want a drink? Yeah. Ta. Or, uh, wouldn't mind a bit of a talk first. I want to know what's going on. Don't ask me. Oh, I thought things were better between you and Sarah. Yeah, well. So, well, that it then. You've thrown your hand in. No. So, what are you doing picking up other women? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So, who's this bit of stuff from the other night? Hiya. Hiya, girls. Jackie, look, I asked you a question. Oh, what's the point? I know you're listening, but you're just not hearing me, are you? I'll make that drink, eh? I don't care how good-looking he is. He's married. What do you reckon? It's lovely, but... Yeah, yeah, he's married. I age you the first time. I just think it's dodgy, that's all. Well, maybe you're right, yeah. I'd probably be better off with a religious mania. It's yeah, funny. Well, you must admit, Casey, it's a bit of you giving me down the banks after what happened with you and Rasputin the Mad Monk. Yeah, well, at least she didn't have a wife. Well, neither's Carl, really. Have you asked her that? Why should he lie to me? I'll give you two guesses. <sighs> I just think he'll like you. So how's me popping out of his head? I can't wait for tonight. Yeah, well, just watch yourself, that's all. I'm sorry. What for? All this grief. Be worthwhile if you and Sarah survive. Mum, please. Look, all I'm saying is keep trying. You seem to be doing really well. What happened? Nothing. But did you fall out over something? No. Then why can't you... It's not about falling out or arguing. Bloody hell, Mum, we are blind. To what? Me marriage. It doesn't work. It never has and it never will. 
I was shoved up the altar at 17 years of age with a shotgun in my ear. No one asked me if I wanted to get married. No one asked Sarah for that matter either. You had your big powwow with her mum and dad and that was that. Do you remember the do afterwards? <laughs> my dad had to drag me up to the honeymoon suite. Why do you think I got so wrecked, eh? I was standing there all night at the bar with me mates thinking, look, he gets. Then every now and then, I'd stare over to Sarah, sitting there at the bar with a wedding dress, out here. She looked about 12. And I kept saying to myself, Go on, pull the cushion out. Tell them all it was a big joke. How long have you felt like this for, then? Since day one. But I had to get on with it, didn't I? Husband, father, soldier. What about Becca? Surely you don't regret having her? No, I love her. If anything happened to her... But what sort of a life would she have? Brought up by two people in a dead marriage. Couldn't she help keep it alive? No, well, let's stay in together for the kids' stuff. It's a load of outdated crap. I mean, what happens when she grows up? What's left for us, then? Well, I don't know, maybe... No, Sarah's a cracking girl. And in my own way, I do love her. We're her best bet if we split up now. Well, we've still got time. That way she's got a chance to get out there and find someone new. Someone who'll be a proper husband to her. Knocking off already. You've only been in five minutes. Panic not, Jacqueline. I'm just sticking a mobile in for its annual service. I'll be back in half an hour. Get going myself. Otherwise, Lord Farnham will be docking me wages. <laughs> See you back at home, then. Yeah. See you later, Blake. Little does he know, eh? If I don't get my hands on that letter soon, it'll be me that ends up going grey. Time was chocker. Did you buy anything nice? Just material and sewing stuff. Mm -hmm. You haven't unpacked then? No, not yet. Well, I'll do it for you if you like. No, it's not. I'll do it myself when I'm ready. Mum! I'll do it myself when I'm ready. Please don't make this any harder than it already is. Any harder for who? For you? Well, what about me? Just unpack your bag and we'll. Mum, I'll unpack when I'm sure I want to stay. Where else are you going to go? I've got places. Your friend's house? Well, maybe, yeah. Why, have you got a problem with that? Actually, I've got a problem with you lying to me. I haven't lied to anybody. Mum, how could I tell you about Chris? I mean, look at all the trouble it's caused. Who said anything about Chris? You did. No, this Chris thing's bad enough. I'm talking about Margaret. What? I'm talking about somebody who lived under our roof, who ate our food, who I trusted. Look, I mean, I think back and it all falls into place. A bit of a game, was it, all this carrying on behind my back? Did you have a good laugh at me? No, it wasn't like that. I thought of the pair of you in our home doing... Well, doing whatever it is you do. Well, Margaret was my friend. Oh, you sleep with all your friends, do you? Yeah, that's right. Friends, family, anybody will do. Beth, I didn't... You mean... just can't cope with it, can you? If you'd shown me one ounce of understanding, I'd have stayed back. I'm sorry. I can't live here anymore. Bye. I'll have to start again now. Can I ask you a question, Max? Far away. Was it after you'd used every pan in the house that you decided to move on to take away curries? No, it just gets boring cooking for yourself every night. It's pointless. 
soulless. I thought you were a big cordon bleu chef. Well, I am when the mood takes me. Yeah, well, you can't live on this milk. I hate curries. Even I can come up with something better than this. Really? Yeah, you only need to ask, you know, if you want help food-wise. Seriously? Deadly. I'll sort you out now if you want. Oh, well, that's uh, really good of you. Um, thanks. Hi, come in. So, how's the Bachelor of Life treating you? Oh, tip-top, Max, thanks. And you? Fine, fine. I love the outfit. <laughs> yes, I've uh, got something in the oven. Oh, I love order guest. That's why I called round here, actually. You haven't got a stock cube I could borrow, have you? Yeah, sure. So, what's cooking? Ah, well, it's best British beef. Oh, thanks. Uh, Yorkshire pudding and all the trimmings. Oh, well, sounds delicious. Join me if you like. Well, thanks, but um, Bev's got a little something lined up for me, but thanks. Oh, right. Well, I'd better be off. Uh, thanks for these. Right. Sure. Bye. Bye. There you are, you see. But not all useless. So, what's with this culinary aid? Yeah, I've, uh, I've written it down for you. What? The address of the Golden Dragon. Best Chinese chippy in Liverpool, huh? Well, oh, you look gorgeous. It's oh, It's me hair all right. Yeah, it's fine. I'll have to go on a minute. It's a little bit risky meeting Carl outside the club. I've told you, he's got nothing to hide. His marriage, it's... it's a sham. If you say so. I'll see you later. Jack, just be careful, eh? What are you doing, love? I'm trying to cut my throat. You're not going out, are you? I'm having a shave. Oh, so you're doing all this to sit in front of the telly all night? OK, yeah, you suss me. I'm going out. Who with? Does it matter? This one you met at the club. You can't. Why not? What have I got to stay in for? Your wife and daughter are sat downstairs. I better get a move on them late as it is. What about that big speech before? That all an act, was it? Just buttering up your soft touch mother for the millionth time? If that's what you want to believe, fine. Look, oh, don't go, love. Please. For me. All right. I'll stay. And I'll sit down there with me nice little family, saying nothing, going nowhere. Just for you. Because it's not doing anyone else any good. Hi. <laughs> Only me. Welcome to my pleasure dome. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, actually. Oh, right. Well, I must say, you look very smart. Well, just because a man dines alone doesn't mean to say he shouldn't dress for the occasion. Here, here. Uh, especially with that food smelling as good as that. I always was a dab hand with a joint. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you keep the place looking so spotless. A matter of personal pride, Max, don't you think? Mm. Well, you're obviously not missing your wife as much as I'm missing mine. Well, why should I? Sorry, I, I didn't mean... I wasn't a guilty party in this mess, you know. I'm certainly not going to take to wearing a hair shirt in Jean's absence. Uh, quite so. Anyway, I just wondered, as we'd both been abandoned, whether you fancied some company. Um, no, I'm sorry, but I mean, that food really does smell superb. It was. Was? I ate it about half an hour ago. Oh. Any, uh, leftovers? Boxed them up and put them in the freezer, I'm afraid. Marvellous invention, Tupperware, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, and, uh, thanks for the offer, Max, but I'm afraid I've got other plans. Anything I shouldn't know? Ah, that'd be telling. All right, well, better get off. I'm due at a chip shop any minute. Where have you been? Working. Marking. I tried. I really tried. Hey, come on. What's happened? She just wouldn't listen to me. Shh. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't go back there. It's OK. I'm going to here with you tonight. Would that be all right? Yeah. Of course you can. <laughs> Bev. Hmm? What was all that 
Blake Carrington business? Nothing. Just a joke. Yeah, well, I don't get it. You wouldn't appreciate it. It was, it was a womany kind of thing. There was something up with me here, wasn't there? No. Not exactly. There was, wasn't there? No, I... I'll go on. Don't be tight. Tell us. There's nothing to tell. I'm sorry, love. It was one of your letters. I was just going to have a nose, you know, see who we owed what to, and... There's one that came across was this. Oh, you don't want to take any notice of this. This is just an advert. So why does it say you're a valued customer? Well, I don't know, do I? Oh, Ron, come clean. Oh, get off, will you? Oh, sensitive. Well, what are you doing opening other people's letters? Well, I thought they were art bills. One grey hair, I've got, that's all. Well, all right, then, maybe three or four. But if you pluck them, they just go back twice as many, don't they? Hey, it's two now, Bev, they do. So I just... Well, I just dab a spot of this on every now and again, then. Oh, I'm going to talk Josh in. Waiting for someone. What if I am? You've been here a while, haven't you? Maybe you thought better of it. What? Well, I mean, look at you. Oh, just do one, Moses. I've been watching you from over there. Slouched up against the wall, done up like a dog's dinner. Anyone would think you were touting for business. Just get lost, you dickhead. Is that the best you can do? You foul-mouthed little slut. You're pathetic, you. And you? Everything all right, Jack? Everything's fine. Is it? Just off home to your prayer meeting, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. Just off home. What was he saying? Not really. Yeah, well, don't worry about that place. He's finished around here. <sighs> Not before the time. Coming in? Nah. Are you meeting someone? Well, I was, but I've changed my mind. Yeah. Love, Becca wants you to read her a bedtime story. I'll let up there now. OK. You all right, son? <laughs> I can't handle this much longer. <laughs> it's doing me head in. Three lives are getting wrecked here. Three lives. I know. Do you? Can you see now that it's over? Yeah, I can. And whatever you decide to do for the best, I'll stick by you all the way. Away. I'm not going in. I'm too depressed. 
Don't let your life collapse because of one stupid lad. I just can't believe he never turns up. I can. But he seems so... So what? Full of crap? No. Different. He's a lad, isn't he? They're all the same. All after one thing. We just can't even do that properly. There you go, Becca. You love your soldiers, don't you? Thank you. After all the games. Carl? Carl? Guess what? What? You've had the letter from the R's and people. There's a council flat going. Yeah? Yeah. We've got the address and everything here. All we've got to do is pick the keys up and we can go and have a look. I'm in work in a couple of hours. Oh, well, I don't want to leave it. Someone might get in ahead of us. I know, but... Well, if we go now, you'd have time then, wouldn't you? Yeah, I suppose so. So what are we waiting for? Would it get in the way if I came and I didn't know who's... Uh... No, the more the merrier. Nice one, then. Brilliant. I'll get my coat on. Come in. Ta-da! Breakfast is served, madame. What's this, Ada? What's the damn oh, paper? So... Yeah, it looks lovely. Good. There was no need. I'm just doing my bit. You don't have to do your bit. You're a guest. Oh, is that all I am? You know what I mean. <laughs> right, now. Tuck in or your croissants will go cold. I think I'll take those, shall I? Unless, of course, there's uh, anything here for you. No, nothing. Well, in that case, thank you. Wouldn't want any more Lord Greystoke jokes now, would we? Ron? Hmm? You're not still in a mood about me opening this hair dye thing, are you? No. Good. I hate to think you didn't trust me. <laughs> Only about as far as I could throw you, my love. Anyway, I reckon you look dead distinguished with grey hair. Don't you mean extinguished? No. I could call you Silver Fox or something. Could you now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's up? Well, as much as I'd like to take this conversation to its obvious conclusion, I do have a shop to run, and I've got to get to the wholesales this morning. We've run out of crisps. Aww. So, sorry, sweetheart. But, uh... To be continued. Eh? Spokesman has said further more serious mm. are to be brought against the couple in the near future. There's been an increase in the number of AIDS cases in the Northwest. In a hard hitting report to be published tomorrow, Dr. Pauline Lee Baker of Northwest General Hospital. Right, love, that's five, five, ten. Oh, see you again, love, Sean. Okay. Hiya. Hi, Jack. You have uh, your friends here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello. You all right? I've been better. How are the girls? Fine. Listen, um, I know it's none of my business, but uh, I saw Rachel the other day. She told me that Beth's left home. Oh, she's gone mad like a Mersey Tunnel, that one. Is it true? Yeah. What happened? Oh, I can't talk about it now. Oh, fair enough. Sorry. It's all right. No, I shouldn't have been poking my nose in. We haven't. OK, I'll leave it in peace, eh? Excuse me. Yeah, uh, you're done. Yeah. All right, love. Sorry. Oh, I'll be a minute. Hello? Hello, Jackie? It's Bev. Look, you're going to have to help us. He's got the letter. Yeah, I think he's on his way in there now. Just don't let him open the bloody thing. Look, I don't know. I don't know how. Just try and get it off him. Well, you're going to have to, otherwise have had it. Uh. Right, it's postmarked Weatherby, Yorkshire. <coughs> OK? Look, I'll be in as soon as I can. Oh, no. Josh are just thrown up everywhere. I'll see you in a bit, OK? Tra. Oh. What are we gonna do, eh, mate? Will you um, excuse me a minute? Yeah. Hello. 
Have you forgotten something? No. Look, if you want to hear what happened with Beth, why don't you come round and we'll talk about it properly? So it's always bad? Do you want to come round or not? Well, what do you think? Don't ask me what I think about anything. That bad? OK, um, I just want to have a word with Jackie first, OK? Ten pound, one penny, please. Yeah, you need a penny. Oh. <laughs> what a gem. Thanks. Thanks. Right, I'll, um, I'll see you later then. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Bye. See you, love. Sure. Thanks. You two seem to be getting on very well. Yeah, well, looks can be very deceiving, Jack. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, I don't suppose you've heard from Jimmy, have you? Hey, mine's house. What? I'm oh, sorry. It's also sort of flying pig day for the minute. <sighs> Shall I take that as a no? Yeah, well. Well, I have. What? You vote here? Yeah. And? I went in last week. You've seen him? <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me? Because he asked me not to. And anyway, I thought it would have done your head in. What? Well, you know, him asking me to come and visit and not you. <laughs> why would you want to see me? I'm only his wife. Sorry. It's all right. It's not your fault. So how is he? It's all right. <laughs> is that it? Well, how does he look? Looks well, actually. Really? Well, as well as you can do on prison food, like. Is that all he's on? Well, he's not going to get any stuff in there, is he? I don't know, is he? Look, Jack, he's off the drugs, I'm sure of him. Honest. Thank God for that. Well, thank yourself, not God. Why? Well, it's you he's doing it for, isn't he? Is that what he said? Well, that's why he doesn't want to see you. He wants to wait until he sorted himself out. All right. Did he, um, say anything else? Yeah. And that he misses you like mad. Right, so, come on, are you going to let me pay for me globe, over? So what do you reckon? Needs a lot of work. Yeah, but anyway, it does when you first move in. Carl? What's that smell? It's just a bit damp, that's all. It's easily sorted. That's all right, then. Come on, Becca, let's have a look at the other bedroom. Don't know about you, but I'm off. Oh, don't go, love, please. This place is a hovel. Yeah, I know that, but she can't see it, can she? Which side are you on? Yours. But let's make the effort, eh? Sarah's sake. Dear me. Is that a bad one? <sighs> Miserable failure, I'm afraid. Saving the place at the races. <laughs> Suppose I should shake her leg and get into work. Yeah, me too. I better do some revision just in case. Want a lift? Yeah, thanks. Chris, mm? is it OK if I um, unpack my stuff? Of course. There's my crease to hell in there. Oh, thanks. <coughs> and can I do a quick wash? Oh, well, you treat the place as your own. So, you made up your mind, then? Definitely not going back to your mum's. No. How are you going to cope with all that freedom? Sorry? Having your own flat. Um, I hadn't really thought about it. <laughs> Useless. No. So, where do you fancy living? Man the pub? I don't know. Well, I'll come flat hunting with you if you like. Take a day from this lot. Well, I'm going to have to find somewhere really cheap. Free, in fact. The thing is, I'm skint. I haven't got any money. I can't even afford to pay my rent till my next grant check comes through. So, what's the general plan of action? I don't know. I hope that wasn't what breakfast in bed was for this morning, trying to butter up a prospective landlady. No, as if. I'm just going to have to find the money and get a few part-time jobs. I'll start looking for a flat today. If you're skint, you're skint. If you have to do this reset, there's no point in wasting time washing dishes. Well, what do you think I should do, then? 
You can stay here with me for the summer. Really? Oh, well, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> no nicking my makeup, no Australian telly, and no boffing in bed. Whatever you say. And as soon as that grant check arrives. They've used my badge, you know. More than could be said for the wallpaper. All I need is a lick of paint and a few shelves. So what do you really think of the place? Not much, to be honest. Well, not much now, but... Not much ever. Don't say that. It's true. Well, just picture the place turned out with all our stuff and a load of nice new furniture. Your imagination's a lot better than mine is. Anyway, I don't care about wallpaper and carpets. It's building a home for me, you and Becca, that matters. Come on, darling. Help Mummy choose a colour for the bathroom. Oh, hiya. Mum. Need a hand? No, can't go. Hey, listen, do you want me to take them lessons so they don't go everywhere? No, yeah, you're all right. Well, don't worry. Right. Let's see what the world's got in store for us this morning, shall we? Yeah, leave them for a minute. How about making your number one employee a nice cup of tea? Er, uh, how about making your number one boss a nice cup of coffee? Come on, I'm spitting feathers here. I've been run off my fees. I'm too good to you, Jackie, do you know that? How many other bosses do you know would do this for the staff? Oh, you're the saints. Uh, you don't take sugar, do you? <laughs> no, me! <laughs> I'm sweet enough. <laughs> Good. I haven't got a clue. Well, is she with her mate? If you mean a girlfriend, yes, I think so. Well, can't you sort it out with her? Well, I tried, but I made a right mess of it. Oh, this is bad, this. <laughs> You're telling me. No, I don't just mean you and Beth. I mean all of us, the way we've all fallen out and known what we know. <laughs> Might be stubborn, but she's no fool. Well, I still don't like it. Well, I won't tell if you went. Oh, by the way, get this. What's that for? Well, it's my share of this month's loan money. <laughs> I can't. Look, I'm not trying to get back in your good books or anything. Look, we're all in this mess together. Whether I'm welcome round here or not, I want to pay me whack. It's really kind of you, but I've sorted it out. What, you've paid him off? No, I've worked out a new deal. Are you kidding? No, and, and this way I get to pay a bit less each week. Yeah, at a higher interest rate and for twice as long. Well, it seemed fair. Oh, Mandy, don't you realise you're going to be into this fella for the rest of your flaming life? <sighs> I'd better get ready for work. Have you got anything for Asani? Oh, not much to be honest, love. Dad had the last of the cheese. I'll nip round the corner and get some. Coming for a stroll, gorgeous. Come on. See you in a minute. Yeah. So, uh, your mind's set on this flat, then? Yeah. Not exactly a mansion, is it? And beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, but you're not beggars. But we do need somewhere to live. Surely you could do better than that. Well, it wasn't that bad. Sarah, it was virtually a slum. It was all right. I've seen better kennels. You're exaggerating. OK. Look, maybe if it was just you and Carl, you could rough it for a bit. But what about Becca? I'm doing this for Becca. You saw the damp on the walls. You can't bring a toddler up in an atmosphere like that. You're saying I don't care about my own daughter? Of course not. Then why don't you give us a chance to make it work? I just want you to think about it. God. Don't you understand? I think about nothing else. Two! Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going into the 
I just sent to them? I suppose so. Good, you can't sky off work just because you got stood up. Mm. Don't believe this. Go for a jack, if he's out. Hiya. This your little girl. Oh, hiya. You're your family man, aren't you? I'm sorry. What for? You said you'd meet me at the shops. You're only here uh, 12 hours late. I know there's no excuse. I got involved with some stuff at home. Yeah, well, that's nothing to do with me. Believe me, you want to keep it that way. Why? What happened? Nothing I'm not used to. It's just when you've got your mum on one side of you and your dad on the other, both shouting their heads off, it's a little bit hard to slip away unnoticed. Well, there's everything all right now. After a fashion, but... There you go, anyway. Look, the last thing I want to do is mess someone as nice as you around. So I'll make me apologies and disappear from your life, eh? Oh. It's for the best. Eh, uh, yeah, all right. But maybe if things calm down in a few weeks. Maybe. I don't know, I feel sorry for him. Well, what happened to slagging him off? Well, he gets enough of that at home. He doesn't need it from me. Oh, so don't tell me it's all back on. I don't know. It's up to him. But if he needs me. Here's your finance. No. Get to the line and get sorted. Yes, sir. Oh, See you later. Grace. Thanks. Oh, but I drown in all this gratitude. No, I really appreciate them this day. Believe it or not, I actually enjoy being with you. Yeah, you're coming for the summer now. Whether I like it or not. <laughs> well, you never know. If things go well, we might decide that living together is a good idea. Did I, did I say the wrong thing? I don't think you're getting a bit ahead of yourself. Sorry? You know how much I think of you. Nobody said anything about a permanent setup. I know. On top of that, do you want to get me the sack? Because these people in this place would like nothing more than to stick the knife in with some half baked accusation about me corrupting students. I, I, I didn't think. Let's just slow down, hey? There's no rush. Right. Library. I got rid of you. What do you want now? Cash. Oh, surprise, surprise. Well, you said you'd leave us some, remember? No. I'm supposed to be taking Josh into town for some new gear. Oh, yeah. I think it's the Alzheimer's disease. Oh, well, fair enough. I suppose I've got to keep me little lad out. Ta. And I suppose you'd be scrounging a brew off me and all while you're here, will you? Oh, yes. I was all right to phone a cab into town. Help yourself. You're an angel. just saved me life, sir. I do realise you did what you thought best. Honest. But can you understand how much you hurt me? My own daughter with another woman and you kept it all a secret. Yeah, but... I mean, I felt like you'd let me down just when I thought... Thought what? That I could trust you. You can. It's all built on trust. You take that away and everything else falls apart. And is that what's happened to us? I haven't enjoyed not seeing you, you know. I really missed you. And I've missed you. God, don't you remember where we were before all this lot happened? I mean, we were that far from... Yeah, well, things have changed since then. How? I don't know, but I think it's about time I grew up and faced the world on my own instead of lumping you with all my problems. That's soft talk, that. It, it doesn't do to be too dependent on anyone else. Why? I mean, where do you think I'm going to go, eh? I gave up Australia to stay here. Do you think I did that because of some corpse in your backyard? I did that for you. Because of the way I feel about you, and if I had any say in the matter, I'd never leave you. <sighs> oh, well. 
what's the point? I could go on like this until I'm blue in the face. It wouldn't make. Has some interesting plans afoot in.